thank you guys for having me here today. I appreciate the attendance. Um, I know that uh, this is something that has kind of popped up on us and is new. And so at, at DPI, we've been going through and surveying and looking at this thing. And so I just want to kind of give you guys the, uh, the story of it at this point of, of where we started and, and to up to this point to where we are now. So the first report of this mealybug was reported back in 2009 uh, out of Palm Beach County. And it was found on a plant called daughter, which is a, a vine-like plant. And up to this point, we have 115 records, and that's counting the records now also that we have on citrus as well. So you can see it goes over 40 different host plant species. So it's not just a citrus pest, but it is very damaging to citrus. So we have seven counties now, Broward, DeSoto, Hardy Highlands, Miami-Dade, and Palm Beach County to where we have found this pest. So the current state, so how this kind of came to be or how we, I, I was able to um, go to the Bonita Conference this year and besides racing Aaron Hemrod down the slide at that event, I also was able to have a lot of sidebar conversations with growers and different things that were going on. And part of that was we started hearing talks about a mealybug that might be present that we haven't seen before on citrus. And so we had those discussions. Uh, we have our s assistant director here, Greg Hodges. We had a conversation. He says, Jason, when you get back, start looking into this. Start feeling around, seeing what's going on. So Lauren Dippenbach, who's here today, who will, who will, who will also speak, um, I really started noticing some heavy infestation of white wax and on um, the branches and fruits. And it was confirmed that it was the Levick mealybug and the first find on citrus and here in Highlands County. So once I got back that week, I started reaching out and uh, talking to some different people, talking with grove owners. And one grove owner in particular I called, he said, you must be calling about my pest problem. So he knew right away. And so he enabled me to come out and meet with him the next morning. And we visited with each other. We looked at the trees, saw the damage, saw the pest there. And that's how this got started. We then began our sampling process to confirm that it is what it is in the field. Um, so kind of the process we have, once it's confirmed, we start putting together a task force and a group within DPI, and also including IFAS and others to start figuring out the investigative process of this and where we're headed with it and, uh, and, and digging into, into it more. And so this also included surveys. We started setting up surveys with Lauren and, uh, and Lance out of uh, Apopka, Lance Osborne, and our scientists from the lab, and going out and getting a, a field survey done on the hot spots that we knew about at the time, and then delimiting surveys out from that to see the spread of this pest. So what we do is we, we begin sending out a bellow, which is a, a be on the lookout internally. Um, to update all of our staff and our inspectors of what, what we've got going on there, out there and what we're looking for. And again, the task force team to help educate our team members and, and through the inspection process. Um, and started implementing all training for all of our surveyors that are out, in, out on the field. I, I, I always prefer to look at uh, as a training as to uh, I want my people to see it hands on. And so with the help of Lauren, we were able to bring everyone in as a group collectively and look at this pest and train our surveyors on what to look for and how to inspect it, but then also how to decontaminate themselves from that to curtail the spread anymore around through while they're doing their surveys. Um, and then after that, everyone got together. We, we did a revision of the pest alert that was originally from 2009. And then it's sent out publicly so everyone gets it, your Facebookers, media, all this. And so it starts getting picked up that way, and you guys are made aware. So since that June 20th original fine, this is what we have done. And this is just out of my Avon, my, this is out of our Avon Park office. We've surveyed over 3,700 acres for this. 114 of those have been grow requests. 3484 in Highlands County, and now we're beginning our, our surveys in DeSoto County as well. Up 
up to this point with uh, the inspections that we've done, this is what we have confirmed. We have 23 positive Lebec mealybug finds and 19 of them in Highlands, three in DeSoto County, and one in Hardy County, and still others waiting confirmation in the lab to this point. This kind of gives you a map. Uh, maybe you can, you can see it. It's uh, the distribution as we know of it at, at, as of now. And granted, these are sample. These are only that we know that have been turned into the lab that we can confirm that it is what it is. So the I don't know if you can see them. There's some yellow crosses there in Palm Beach County, which were the original finds on Daughter. And then you see the Highlands, Hardy, and DeSoto counties. And you'll see you'll see the two up in North Florida, which I believe were interceptions by USDA. Um, so it's not established in those counties. So what are we seeing? So we're seeing the pest. Um, as we continue to do surveys, we're seeing it. And it's, it, and it's across, we're seeing it on young trees, we're seeing it on mature trees. And also part of the training that we do with our staff is looking at not only the pest and how to identify the pest, but also the beneficials of the predators that are out there as well to see if they're out there. And, and, and that'll be hit some with Dr. Ahmed's talk, and I'm sure Lauren on the mealybug destroyer, and some of the other beneficials that we're seeing along when we are finding the mealybug itself also. So what are our steps moving forward? We're going to continue doing our surveys. We're in a, we're in a multi-pest survey at this time. We do many surveys. We're coming out of CBS, which we'll be going back into once color break starts again. But at this point, we're in a multi-pest survey. And we're going to continue these, looking for this and continuing the communication, such as this event right here. We're reaching out to growers and reaching out to IFAS and working together. And, and at this point, we've had such a great relationship with IFAS, and uh, we can't thank them enough for what they've been doing and helping coordinate our efforts um, with this new pest alert that, it, that is on Citrus. So that's of utmost importance for me right now is to open that communication with growers. I've talked to several. You guys can call me, reach out to me, and uh, you know we're, we're here to help you guys through this process. Um, pest identification and confirmation. So some of what we do is is we can do grower request surveys where we come out and and the pest. Now obviously depending on staff and the type of survey we're in, we'll try to get to you when we can. But there's other ways that you guys, if you see it in the field, you can get it confirmed by taking the taking the the sample yourself and sending it directly to our lab in Gainesville. Um, you can bring it to our office, you know, and we'll help you with the form. I know there's sample submission form packets that went out today that you guys can fill out, pull the sample yourself. If you want confirmation that it is what it is, then that's one way to do it. Because part of the surveys, what we've noticed, and what I'm sure Dr. Med will hit on a little bit, is we'll, you'll see the white vexing that, that comes along with this on the on the on the fruit or the stems, but that doesn't always mean that the pest is alive in there. It's, yes, they've been there, but maybe you've nuked it already, or maybe the beneficials have gotten to it. And I'll kind of let the scientists hit a little bit more on that, but it's something we're noticing. I have Christina Bice's name up there. I want to introduce her. Wave your hand real quick, Christina. Christina is our new supervisor in the Avon Park office, and so I want you guys to get to know her as well. Um, we're excited for her to be in that position. She's been with us for a, for a long time and is just now promoted into that, that position now. So she's there to help any of you guys as well as far as sampling or grower request surveys and this sort of thing. So at this point in time, there's, n there w there's not a quarantine on commercial groves based on this pest. Okay, We're trying to figure out we're, we're investigating. We're trying to figure out what's going on. We're trying to figure out the pathway. We're trying to figure out where all it is. There's not a quarantine in place. However, for citrus nurseries, and we have our citrus nurseries inspectors here. Uh, Mr. Ezo is in charge of that as well, can be of help. But if this is found in a citrus nursery, there will be a quarantine put in place. However, with that quarantine, here we come in with IFAS and working with the grower to eliminate it so that we can continue to facilitate business and move trees out the door because we realize the importance of that as well. You know? But we don't want this to be another pathway of moving the pest around to areas that may not have it at this point in time. 
Uh, and it goes the same for retailers, your Lowe's, Home Depot's, these as well, that we have inspectors looking for this also. So that's kind of the story as where, we, where we've been to where we are now. And um, if, I, if, if there's anything I can do or, or you guys, you know, a lot of you have reached out to me already, but I just want you to know that we, we're, we're an open door policy and we're here to help. And uh, like Lori said, I'm a Highlands County guy. I'm from here and I get it, I'm on the other side of the fence, but we all care about citrus and we know that this is just another, it's another wound, but something that we can continue to fight through. And we're here for you guys and uh, I just thank you.